Uh, hello, friends. Welcome to Be Waste Wise. I am Shweta Bandapani. I am the community builder at Be Waste Wise. Before we start, I'm just going to give a very brief introduction of what we do at Be Waste Wise. We're a nonprofit organization. We are trying to address the need for uh, knowledge dissemination in waste management. Be Waste Wise started with the belief that consistent education leads to sustained long term change. And we very strongly believe that anyone working with waste, wherever they are in whichever part of the world, deserve access to latest thinking, uh, to the latest case studies, and just the wealth of experience that's available worldwide. Mm -hmm. And uh, as we are in very uncertain times in most parts of the world right now, uh, we understand that the need to address the climate crisis is immediate. And uh, today we're going to talk about reducing food waste in hotels and restaurants. Hives, who has the, uh, who has moderated other panels for us in the past, is going to be the moderator for this panel. If you have not seen the other panels that he has moderated, please head to the video panel section of our website and you will find them there. Uh, he loves setting up initiatives which solve complex problems, especially in areas of uh, circular economy and waste management. Today with us, we also have Anna, who's a project leader and research fellow in marketing at Hotel School The Hague. And we have Carlos, who's an associate professor in at the University of Applied Sciences and Arts of Western Switzerland. And uh, before I hand this over to Hayes, just a reminder to all of you that we will be taking questions. So please use the Q&A section. Please start putting in your questions as soon as you get them and Heis will ensure he gets them answered. Either he answers them or he posts them to the panelists. So yes, welcome to the panel and over to you, Heis. Well, uh, hi everybody. I hope uh, you and your family are doing well in these uh, strange days of uh, COVID-19. Uh, I wish you a warm welcome to this webinar and today we will focus on the topic of how to reduce food waste in hotels and restaurants. I'm, I'm really excited to host this one because uh, today uh, we have two knowledge, uh, great knowledge experts online, Anna and Carlos, uh, who have been introduced already by, uh, by Swita. Um, and um, uh, this is the fifth in a series of webinars about food waste, uh, which uh, me and uh, B Waste uh, Wise and Kat Heinrich organized together. And our previous episodes are online available. Um, well, if you're watching this live, please use the, the, the Q&A function for your questions and uh, let's go for it. Um, so about the topic, in 2015, the nations of the world adopted the, adopted the sustainable, uh, sustainable Development Goals, including a call for halving the rate of food loss and waste by 2030. One of the industries which uses food in large quantities is the hospitality industry. In hotels and restaurants, there are opportunities to reduce food waste. And the question is, which innovation strategies can you apply to increase um, sustainable hospital development? So our four, first speaker is uh, Carlos Martin Rios. Um, he's an associate professor uh, management at the Ecole Hotelier de Lausanne. And he has an, authored an impressive amount of publications and acted as an advisor to various companies and research centers on sustainable innovation management programs. I'm, uh, on a personal note, I'm really glad that Carlos joined us today because he is actually now on a sabbatical leave and he's willing to uh, spend part of that time on this, uh, this event. So, uh, Carlos, can you uh, briefly, briefly introduce yourself to the extent I didn't do that already and, and share your views on, on the topic uh, based on your work here? Yes, sir. Uh, thank you. You did a great presentation, by the way. <laughs> uh, um, first and, and, and foremost, I, I would like to send my um, warmest uh, regards and a lot of the, uh, good vibes to the industry. Food service and hospitality, they are coping with a, a terrible situation right now. Uh, we, we hear on the news what is, is happening these days is just... Um, is that it's a, it will have a long lasting consequences for the industry. And I think that uh, to some extent the old must uh, help in, in whatever way we can. In, in, in my case, it's like by doing what I, what I think I know best, which is doing research. Uh, I'm basically a researcher on the area of service innovation. And for the last um, uh, 
five, six, seven years, I've been uh, working a lot on the, on the area of sustainability. Sustainability broadly understood as the way uh, companies, hotels, food service, and other service uh, industries can adopt the SDGs, can get closer to the sustainability principles and the social, uh, economic, and environmental uh, aspects. And one side of my research is on food and food waste. I am doing a, um, quite a lot of research on, on, on this specific topic of uh, improving uh, the way we understand the food waste challenge. So um, that would be my, my introduction. Should I go ahead with my presentation now or? Yes? Yes, please go on. Okay, so then I will take a, the, the next few minutes to explain briefly and extremely briefly what, what I've been doing on research and, uh, uh, and what I can share with the audience. Let me please uh, share the screen with you. Okay. Uh -huh. And this is, um, I just put together a few slides on, on food waste uh, innovation in the food service industry. Food service also including hospitality for that matter. Uh, my research is basically mostly at the, at the management level, top management level, at the strategic aspects of managing food in the, in, the, in the industry, but also understanding the food supply chains and the food value chains. I'm here just talking briefly about what it is specific to, to our webinar today. This is uh, the notion that I, I think I, win, I want to uh, bring forward and share with the industry. Something that is being discussed, but it hasn't been a study in, in, in detail. And that we have to, to keep digging down deeper into it and helping the industry to move into what I define as a sustainable food waste management system that it also includes innovation. Uh, this is a process. And as a process is where we take is a leaders in the industry, managers, professionals, chefs in the restaurants, they look at sustainability considerations that are integrated into the food service system. And in, in the idea, of, in the concept of going from idea generation, when we are defining what kind of service we want to deliver, what kind of uh, food establishment we want to set up as a business, to the to commercialize, commercialization when we have our daily menu, when we are uh, serving in the buffet in the, in the hotel or any other aspects related to food. And the idea is to go through the entire process and trying to minimize the amount of wastage. And that is the whole concept. So it's a more holistic approach toward food waste than just the most operational side of it that many managers have in mind. Um, just uh, go uh, straight to the point of the uh, key findings of my current research. I have different projects that are exploring different aspects of the sustainable uh, uh, food waste management system. So in a nutshell, I would say, first of all, my research shows and is consistent with what other scholars are doing nowadays is that there are little innovative practices when it comes to sustainable food waste. Uh, most experts, uh, they will say that uh, innovation in, in food waste is mostly uh, risk averse and is short term focused and it for the most part is lacking a clear vision. Uh, people are doing mostly ad hoc operational uh, uh, measures and, 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 and solutions for, the, for this big, pro big problem. And as I'm saying on my research, this is this put the industry and put professionals at a disadvantage. Don't think in, in, in the whole view, they let they, they do, it, that it refrain them from really uh, understanding and providing with uh, long lasting solutions. The second uh, element that my research uh, is proves, and I have a current project exactly on the notion of awareness, is exactly that. There is a lack of awareness that for the most part minimizes uh, innovation. It is true that 
people understand there is a, a wastage problem, but when you just go and talk face-to-face, uh, uh, -face, one with managers and chefs, most of them they say that we're doing pretty well. I think it's someone else who have the problem, not us, which is that it, that is clearly a big problem. And, and, and why is that? Well, one of the things I want to say here is that if you do not recognize, if you're not aware of that situation, chances are you will be missing opportunities to share common innovation challenges, good practices, best practices, uh, engaging with the community in solving this problem together. And the third uh, main takeaway of finding of my research is the notion of, again, again, with the best practices. Um, what we're seeing is that there are very good people out there doing extremely interesting things here and there. And we are right now at the moment in which maybe from universities, from hotel schools, from uh, culinary schools, uh, the process of we should be doing now the work of pulling together all these practices and developing a catalog of what the best practices are. And that's something that I'm currently engaged on. I'm looking for um, a European funding, I already have several uh, universities as partners to work in this project. What, how, when we collect a set of best practices that can be shared all across the industry. Um, I also want to, uh, to have a few words about the current uh, coronavirus crisis. And, and the transformation that is going to entail. What we see now in the media is that mm, a lot of companies, restaurants and hotels are taking this uh, time as an opportunity to uh, help uh, people in need by distributing food, by uh, avoiding a wastage and, and trying to um, share the food with those that they need it the most. That is good, that is great, I would say. It's not just good, it's, it's a fantastic, fantastic initiatives out there. But I'm mean, looking a little bit beyond these current uh, practices into what it lies ahead. And what is very, very interesting, one thing is to, to consider is that there is already a strong debate about the food value chain and all the practices that happen from producers, suppliers, vendors to restaurants, or retailers to restaurants and, and, and hotels. I, sometimes crises are uh, the best time to stop, think and rewire processes and let's start doing things all over again in a different way. I am quite optimistic that this crisis will help uh, many uh, leaders in the industry to rethink their supply chains, the way they've been doing things, uh, how they've been a, a buying produce, how they've been a storaging produce, how they've been related to local, not relating that much with local and regional producers and uh, stocking and then keeping for the cost base. And now they say, oh, maybe we shouldn't be doing this. Um, and also a very important uh, aspect that I, I would encourage any manager to consider right now is the question I ask in there, what, what is the best overall food waste innovation strategy after the crisis? Should we think about reduction of food waste as we've been, been doing so far? Or it is about time to start working about food waste prevention. And I think, and this is what we've seen, in, we've been seeing and we are demonstrating on research, is that most minimization practices, like for example, recycling, or what we've seen these days, uh, um, giving food away to those in need, they usually yield to lower overall results than preventive actions. And prevention includes anticipating, managing, and innovating the whole relationship we have with food. So in that sense, and that's just to finish up, I will say that what lies ahead based on what we've been doing on research and what we're learning is like a new, hopefully new food waste innovation landscape. What do I mean by that? Well, I mean what I said at the, at the beginning. And then again, 
we're looking at the sustainable food waste uh, innovation and management as this, the whole process. We have to stop looking at individual practices, ad hoc practices. When we have a problem, we go there, we solve it. But we need to start thinking about the whole sustainable food waste system and food, food management system that is in aligned with our sustainable principles. Why is that? Well, first, most interesting enough, my research and all my conversations with uh, restaurant owners, hoteliers, chefs, is that for most of them, food waste is just primarily a cost factor. And they only take action when they realize that they are losing money. And, and this is kind of a paradox, as I say, because it's a very interesting that our industry in general, hospitality and tourism, is an industry with low margins, lower profits than other industries. And, and, and yet, we think of one of our most important resources, which is food, only as a commodity that we don't have to think much about it. We just have it there, it's up for grabs, we take it, we use it, we deliver the food, and that's it. I think that is a very interesting paradox, and we, uh, hopefully we will, we've seen a moving away from this kind of uh, perception when we now see more restaurants, more rest chefs, more hoteliers thinking of food, of food as a value, as a cultural value, as a principle with, uh, is related to our roots, social roots, our heritage, our, our, our who we are in a way, and we should treat food with care, right? And, and that would be again, what, how I, I finish is this question about the awareness. And, and when I talk to, to owners and chefs, few of them talk and think about food waste as an aspect that relates to social consciousness, to sustainability, or even to better world practices. Are we doing the right things all the time in the back office, in the kitchen, in terms of manipulation of cooking and serving? Are we controlling the process from what I'm saying at the first, from this sustainable food waste, food management system approach. And most people, most managers do not, do not. And what is very, very, very much interesting, and with this I want to finish, is with the word awareness. Uh, one of my latest projects in the right now is, is an article that is under review, uh, hopefully to, to be soon published, uh, clearly demonstrates that no manager, no chef will ever claim that they don't care about food waste. Everybody cares, right? But what is very much interesting is when you start asking about a specific practices to minimize food waste, to reduce food waste, or to prevent food waste, most of them get kind of taken aback and say, well, we don't need that. And what I'm seeing is there is a, almost a perfect correlation between those who really are aware of the food waste and the food management problem and those who are taking initiatives and innovation to reduce and minimize. And there is almost no practices, no clear management for those who think we don't have a problem here. So maybe I wanted to conclude by saying that we have to keep doing things like what we're doing right now, opening up the debate, talking to the industry, sharing ideas, engaging in a conversation, because the most we talk, the more, sorry, because the more we talk, the more we engage, the higher the level of awareness, and then the easier to change path and to introduce different practices and innovations. Um, yeah, and that would be, um, yes, that would be pretty much uh, my presentation. Well, thanks Carlos for your, uh, for your clear explanation. Uh, it's very interesting to hear that actually uh, maybe a large part of the problem is a lack of clear vision and awareness. 
and that creates uh, the paradox on, on that food waste is, is seen as a cost. Um, but could that also be like one of the key uh, elements of a, of, a, um, of a successful strategy to actually uh, make sure that hotels and restaurants reduce the food waste, that it's just cost saver instead of uh, uh, putting the, the, the social and, and, and environmental issues on, on, on top. Yes, absolutely. Uh, what I'm seeing here is, and this is what I'm, this is the, our current priorities is that we have to uh, go beyond cost. Cost is important. It's, it's probably the entry door to the industry. Go and tell them, yes, you are losing money. And once there, let's move on into maybe all the aspects that are as important as cost that are related to sustainability, that are related to the entire strategic vision and the business model. What kind of business and industry we want to see uh, thriving in the next 5, 10, 15 years, right? Okay. And, that, and that is a conversation in which most mm, managers and, and, and chefs, they are so interested in participating because this is one of the things that I like the most about this, 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 the industry is the level of enga engagement. M most people love their work. So uh, it's easier, right, than in other environments to engage in a conversation. But we, we have to really refocus the, the level of conversation and go moving up into more strategic aspects. Okay, great. Um, well, I'll take some questions of the audience now. Uh, the first one which came in, and uh, I can't do them all right now. Uh, the other ones will take up at the end. Uh, but the first one is, how can hotels rest and restaurants donate food with uh, the current pandemic, uh, with the current crisis, the pandemic crisis? Uh, most are struggling and seeking a stimulus bill-out packages from governments, right? How, how do you, what is your, how do you see that? Uh, many restaurants are donating because they, there's no other way to live with the, with the amount of food that they had and they, they cannot serve anymore. So donation is, is just a very short-term solution for the problem, right? Uh, the, the other aspect is the need for help, uh, for institutional help for restaurants and managers. And, and for that, I'm all in. I've been advocating and all, uh, by all means that, um, like for example, in the US, we've seen that, uh, there's been a lot of um, media coverage about the need to help for the airlines and the air transportation industry. And I agree, uh, airlines are also uh, struggling in a way. However, they offered and they employed a third of the people that the food service and hospitality mm. industry employed. And yet they are getting way more money than, than mainly because, I mean, we are dealing here with the small companies, small restaurants, small hotels, independent hotels, that they, they don't have maybe the, the power to, uh, or, or the voice to, to, to go and talk to governments. We really need help for the industry, institutional help, loans, and ways to, to, to cope with the crisis. That said, I, I believe that this should also be an opportunity to rethink yeah. twice the way we do business. No, right. I understand. Yeah, sure. That's totally true. And I think everybody, like, the, I learned that the Chinese sign for crisis actually means two things. The one thing is crisis, and the other thing is chances. So it's threat and chances. And uh, I think that's also true for this crisis. So uh, one more question from the audience. Um, uh, where do you think uh, the biggest food waste uh, occurring is occurring in this uh, whole system of hotels and restaurants? And what innovative practices you think are the, the needed most on the preventive uh, approach? Uh, and could you give an example for that? Yes, uh, that's a very good question. We, there is data that shows that we, at the end of the value chain in the food service and hospitality, we, we are accountable for close to 20% of all the food waste, about that number. Uh, the large, uh, 
uh, bulk of uh, wastage occurs at the at the beginning of the of the of the uh, food value chains, mostly in the less developed or more most. Um, I didn't want to say less developed, but uh, uh, less economically developed countries, where they they are the agricultural side of it. But in the Western countries and the most economically developed countries, there is a big uh, proportion of food waste at the end of the chain. Retail, food uh, service, uh, hospitality, and then the final consumer, right? Um, that, that, there is where it, it takes place most of the wastage. What do I mean by innovation in, in, uh, in prevention? They, they are, uh, I have this article published a couple of years ago when we were looking at different type of innovations. I, I talk about incremental and radical innovations and some of them were had to do, for example, with technology. We've been seeing there are nowadays some companies, they are mostly startup companies that they are working on measuring uh, waste and as it happens in the kitchen, right? By using different technologies, they are able to provide with the, in, in nice uh, overview of the amount of food and leftovers that is wasted. And with that, those numbers, uh, chefs and managers can start making decisions. Why yeah. this happened is because we bought uh, too much produce and, and the, these consumers that our clients don't don't want it is because there's some fault in 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 the cook process is because and that is for example a nice uh, mix of uh, using technology just for quantification right but it can derive into uh, prevention because the most more information we had about the problem the easier is to retrace our processes and start breaking them up into uh, SOPs, into uh, operations, and seeing what, where we are lacking, where we having the problem, where the chain is broken, where there is lack of information or lack of best practices, and go into into them to solve them. Okay, great. Well, um, thanks for the extensive answer to this question. Uh, very interesting, I think. Measurement is definitely, for sure, uh, an interesting tool which you, which we could use to raise awareness. Um, the other questions of the audience, I will save for uh, and, and try to see whether we can address them uh, at at the later stage of this webinar. Uh, well, Carlos, thank you so much for your very very interesting uh, presentation. Uh, I also got some compliments here from people, uh, which thank you for the very good presentation. So uh, um, that's uh, that's uh, for you. Uh, and it's now time to uh, to move towards uh, our next speaker. Uh, I would like to introduce to you Anna de Visser Am Amundsen. Uh, Anna is a project leader and research fellow in marketing at the Hotel School De Hague. And she's also a doctorate candidate at the Vrije School of Vrije Universiteit Amsterdam. Uh, Anna and her team uh, work closely with both students and industry on food circularity and waste-related projects. Uh, I'm looking very much forward to her, Anna's approach, especially uh, because uh, her work is around my corner. So uh, please uh, take it from here, Anna, introduce yourself and um, uh, and, and share your view on, on the topic based on, on your work. Uh, thank you very much for, uh, for that introduction, Gijs. Uh, Delighted to be here. Uh, I have to say it feels strange to talk about this topic. Indeed, I, I agree with Carlos in, in times of crisis uh, when restaurants are closed and, and then to talk about uh, food waste feels a bit double, but, uh, but nonetheless, I hope to, uh, to share some of the findings indeed that we have found through the research that we've done through our uh, food circularity project that I started about three years ago a bit more, uh, more out of uh, the need and, and a moral sense that I felt that we're educating the future leaders of the hospitality industry. Uh, we cannot not do something about this problem. And seeing that we're, and, and, and I tell this because it's relevant later in my presentation, that we're operating six restaurants across two campuses, we can also do a lot of things in practice. So uh, we can actually bring food into our restaurants that would have other be otherwise been wasted, uh, yet it is still fit for human consumption. 
and really get our students to work with this type of food, understand how it should be and can be treated, uh, prepared and served and presented in a way where it actually, rather than being wasted, it regains its economic value. So that's how the project started very much. And, and as we grew into it, I felt also, yes, that's very nice. And we call that rescued food. So I actually, for, from my research perspective, I look particularly into how do we actually market this type of rescued food. But I also felt in coming back and linking into to Carlos story that that's nice, uh, but, but still sort of we're recuperating food that would have otherwise been wasted, but we also have to go to the core of the problem. Uh, and really to see uh, how can we indeed prevent food from being wasted in the first place. Uh, so that's sort of the choice that I made today to, uh, to focus this presentation on and to share some of the findings. I've done a lot of field work in particular, uh, field studies, and, uh, and just uh, on that note, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start my presentation. Let me share my screen. Can everybody, can you see the screen? It's all good? Yes, we can see it. Thanks. Very good. Um, so, indeed, we talked about uh, this a little bit, uh, or, and I'm sure, Heis, you've covered this a lot in your podcast, the amount of food that is being wasted and the consequences that that has uh, environmentally, socially, and economically. I think it's, it's good to, to just, since this is in the context of hospitality and food service uh, businesses, that to understand that at least before this crisis and, and indeed uh, fully aligned with Carlos, that I hope we get out of this crisis and that I will be able to say that not one out of six meals are, are actually wasted in restaurants, meaning that the food that we prepare, one out of every six meals actually goes into the bin. And what we see out of research as well, that uh, about two thirds of that actually happens in the kitchen uh, where we or we over order or we over prepare or we don't store it properly. Uh, so that is actually where most of the, where the waste happens. And, and the picture that you see here is actually where we, we threw a wheelie bin uh, onto um, to an orange sale on the car, uh, on the floor. And what you can see the, the person that the chef that is sitting down is looking at eggs we found four fully uh, uh, usable eggs that were just chucked into the to the wheelie bin and, and, and the value of this wheelie bin was about 350 euros and we've done this on, in other places as well. We see that that's about the average amount uh, that is being wasted in every green sort of organic waste bin uh, when we do this. And, and so you can, you can then, and I fully align with, with Carlos with saying, so how can this be? Chefs love food and they hate waste. So why is that then? Why are we encountering this? And it's certainly not because chefs, and I work very closely with our chefs because they're ignorant and because they just think that, that, that food is a commodity, but it's really because of, we operate in a very, very uh, fierce competitive market where sort of waste has become uh, part of the norm of operating a successful restaurant that wants to deliver great customer service uh, and, and, and great customer experiences. So, so part of that problem is, you know, going into any very modest restaurant today, customers expect to get abundance, but they also expect to get a great uh, amount of variety. Look at, yeah, like I said, in any modest restaurant, you will expect to get at least three different types of bread. Bread being one of the, the biggest uh, uh, product categories that is wasted in our, in our industry. So, um, so looking at this, uh, you know, and, and diving into it, there is actually, there are strategies, and that's maybe also aligning again to what Carlos was saying, that is looking into, you know, uh, we don't have to make a choice, you know, we don't have to interfere with the customer interface just because we want to reduce the, the reduce waste or reduce cost because that's often in a service industry in a service setting that's kind of the paradox where we think okay so if we, we're going to reduce cost then that that's actually going to have an imp implication on the level of service quality that we can deliver and this is a strategy by Saitamo and and uh, 
and Wirt, uh, cost, cost effective service excellent. And I write more about that together with my co-author in a chapter that was published in this food uh, waste management book. Uh, where it's really about sort of training your employees uh, to, to work on cost reduction measures. And that tends to be a harder thing to implement. Uh, you know, delivering great customer services today is kind of an easy sell. We all get that, you know, to be competitive in this market, we have to uh, state very special and, and, and personalized uh, customer experiences, but the cost side is a bit harder to tackle. Uh, companies that have really mastered this, both being best in their class in terms of service and best in their class in terms of cost reduction, Singapore Airlines, for example, is an, is an example that especially Jochen Wirtz uses a lot when he talks about this uh, cost effective service excellence strategy. So what did we do in a, um, a, in a waste, a sort of food waste reduction context? We said, okay, so if we don't want to interfere with the service excellent, but we want to reduce cost and in particular food waste cost, we say, okay, let's look into nudging. Uh, let's look into nudging as, as an influence strategy that can sort of in a very subtle way uh, trigger, we've seen that a lot in research, consumers to make more responsible and sustainable choices. We haven't seen so much of that in an employee setting. And this is sort of uh, what we were interested in looking at. Can this actually work? And the example that I have on the screen here is, uh, is from Schiphol International Airport uh, in Amsterdam. Uh, just by putting this fly in the, in the men's urinal, this is a very classic example. What m maybe not everybody knows is that by doing that, they saved almost half a million euros per year in cleaning costs just by nudging men to actually aim a little bit better uh, than, than, you know, uh, the rest is self-explanatory, I think. Uh, so, so we looked into that uh, indeed as a, as a strategy for behavioral change. So what is nudging? Uh, most of you probably know because this is a very well-established sort of behavioral influence strategy these days, but it comes down to changing the choice environment, the choice architecture uh, without necessarily prohibiting. So let's go back to the urinar. Men are still allowed to pee all over the place if they want because there, there are no fines if they would but also it is not incentivized. So you're not gonna get uh, 20 cents or 50 cents if you actually aim correctly. Uh, why is that so important to mention here? Because if it's prohibited or if it's incentivized, the minute we take away the, pro the, the fine for doing the wrong, uh, the wrong behavior, or the minute that we take away the incentive, people tend to fall back into their old behaviors. The photos that you see here is this a typical nudge where we use uh, in the kitchen uh, a um, traffic light system. That's what we implemented here. So you see on the left, uh, on the fridges, green smileys encouraging, yes, uh, walk those extra meters to put uh, food back into the fridge. And on the right hand side, indeed on the wheelie bins, red, very sad smiley saying, okay, ho, 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 before you actually just chuck that last piece of Parmigiano cheese that is difficult to, to grate, for example, think about it, or can you actually walk those extra uh, meters uh, to put it back into the fridge again? Uh, so it can take many, many forms. I'm not going to, for time reasons, go through, and there is a lot of information also out there on, on different types of nudging. We're going to zoom in a little bit on norms, social norms, uh, priming. I just mentioned the traffic light, sort of the smiley system is a typical priming that, that indeed our acts are often influenced by subconscious cues, but also commitments. Uh, I've done quite some research on this now and, and field studies, and it seemed to be a very effective nudge in our kind of setting. Uh, so what does that mean a commitment nudge. A uh, commitment nudge is basically presenting uh, in this, in our case, employees, so the kitchen brigade, uh, with a commitment letter, almost like a pledge, uh, that they have to read through and actually you can see the boxes where they have to tick specific actions. We have had other letters where they also have to write up actions themselves that they're going to do during their shift to decrease food waste during their, uh, during their working hours. Um, what you see here are two different uh, 
commitment letters. Uh, we were curious in, in finding out in, in our settings and, and that's the nice thing, of course, and I think Carlos, you will have the same uh, uh, thing in, in Lausanne where you have different kitchen brigades often be, uh, depending on when the students are, are working. So we were interested in knowing, okay, so, so indeed are, are our kitchen brigades, are they more triggered by a commitment letter that is saying, really, come on guys, we need to reduce food waste because it's better for the environment and we need to do our part. And that's why it's important to, um, to save, save food. Or on the right hand side, you see a sort of a financially framed letter where we're saying, okay, now, Nice, but uh, uh, we have to be careful with costs, and that's why it's important, you know, uh, because we're a school, so we really need to uh, to to save costs on on food. And please do your best uh, uh, in saving food, so so that we also can reduce the, the food costs. So when we did that, we 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 ran the different conditions. First, we had what we call a zero measurement, or often called also a baseline measurement. That was for two weeks. Our restaurants open uh, open from Monday to Friday, so that means for us ten operational days. Uh, we had the environmentally framed letter that I just explained to you for two weeks, and then a financial frame. And again, these were different kitchen brigades. What you can see is that uh, when no nudge is implemented, we see that our waste level over those 10 operational days were 610 kilos. And when, uh, let me just put this, and when, uh, when we have an environmentally framed commitment letter, so they had to sign it every Monday morning when they started, it actually decreases with almost uh, 23%. Uh, so that's a significant uh, difference also in research where we see if we calculate this to money because I do agree with uh, with Carlos also here that this is a great in, in incentive for to get chefs on board uh, to really translate this and so what does it actually mean well in this sense it means that okay we saved almost a thousand euros in 10 operational days just by having our staff signing these commitment letters they don't cost very much so the effort of doing that, so I think most of my work is also intended to show that there is a lot to be gained. There are a lot of low hanging fruits that we can do. Because I think that's the biggest fear also for chefs. They wanna save their food. They wanna operate, especially in an, in an industry that operates in with very, very tight margins. They wanna save on food costs, but it's often the how. And often the solutions are, are, are elaborated, sophisticated, technological solutions, and that scares them off. So what I've seen is that when we do this work and we say, listen, 22%, that's a step forward. But not only that, it also gives them a lot of insights in how much is actually being wasted, because that is exactly what Carlos also mentioned. When you talk to chefs, oh, we don't have a problem. Oh, it's the guests. They are the ones that are wasting it. But again, the guests, the plate waste that we're seeing, that is often caused, uh, caused because maybe the portion sizes are too big and, and we haven't really measured how much we're actually putting on the plates and if that's really necessary to have three potatoes rather than one potato. And it might seem very trivial, but over, over a shift or, or two shifts or over a week or over two weeks, that translates into a significant amount of, of waste. Uh, so that's some commitment letter as a, as a sort of a tip to 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 work with uh, another. Let's see if I can move on in this presentation. There we go. Social norms. Social norms are really guidelines of of how uh, other people behave. We kind of look at others and see how they behave and what they are doing, and 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 that's sort of how we are. are uh, socially constructed to, to very much follow, follow the crowd in that regard. Uh, so, so also something that we've seen a lot uh, out of research, especially out of uh, behavioral economics and on, on nudging in a consumer setting, uh, that telling people, okay, so this is actually what other people are doing, then uh, consumers tend to follow. So we were very curious here to see if we can actually trigger the same behavior uh, for employees. So, so here you see an example of where we're saying, okay, so as a community, we're working really hard in reducing food waste. Uh, are you really, are you going to do your part? And we put these posters up in around the, the kitchen. 
uh, this was uh, an experiment that we had. Uh, it's now about two, two years ago, but this is also fully explained in the books chapter that I uh, mentioned earlier. Uh, by only doing that again, we decreased, uh, so only those, again, posters, not very difficult to develop, also not very expensive. To put up in the kitchen, we see an average decrease of food waste with about 25%. Uh, this was a saving of about 14 kilos uh, per food, per, uh, for, uh, savings of 14 kilos of food per day uh, and yeah, almost 100 euros per day savings. So also not only looking at it from an environmental perspective, what that means, but also it really sort of contributes to, uh, to the bottom line. Finally, so, so I, I think a lot of the work that we've done sort of in the field, uh, I mentioned only two of the studies, uh, kind of led up to a conversation with uh, national organizations in the Netherlands. Same tegen voedsel verspilling is a foundation that was started by the Minister of Agriculture in this country and, and other larger companies, one being uh, the Rabobank, one of Europe's biggest banks, who was the initiator of, as part of their uh, food forward program, they said, okay, we really, again, talking about low hanging fruits, we want to sort of really help and, 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 and put the, the food service sector forward as, as a good practice example where we can really make a difference and quite quickly. So we got together um, with Rabobank and some other companies, about four other companies, a software technology company also who helped us with the measurements uh, and said, okay, we're gonna launch uh, as a multi-stakeholder partnership, a, food, a national food waste challenge. Uh, in the end, we had 174 participating, uh, participating restaurants uh, located nationwide in the Netherlands. Like I showed you before in the other uh, studies that I've done, we went in for one week and took, the me me took measurements in these restaurants uh, uh, for one whole operational week. Uh, some restaurants also uh, measured themselves. And then we implemented various interventions. And then we came back again and we took a one measurement uh, during one week again to see what the effect had been of the interventions that we, uh, that we had implemented. Uh, this, uh, these results are now under, um, uh, also under review by papers. I can't give you the specific results of the, of the, of the uh, interventions, but I will show you the type that we, uh, that we use, but all, and also the overall effect uh, of, the, of the interventions for the whole challenge. So this was again a commitment letter. This is again the social norms that we talked about. This is in Dutch and it says, be creative. Your chef is uh, reducing food waste. Are you joining? And then it's photos of, okay, so if you have leftover bread, make croutons. Uh, if you have leftover veggies, make a, a vegetable soup. If you have uh, uh, peels from an apple, make an apple juice, uh, just to sort of trigger and also prime uh, employees to, to really understand, okay, maybe I can actually do something with those leftovers rather than uh, uh, chucking them in the bin. Uh, the second one is, 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 more, is, is more of a social intervention, is what we call a block leader, help your ambassador, and then sort of here the kitchen team themselves, they actually choose someone who's, who's going to be the ambassador of reducing food waste during this peri period. So help your ambassador against the fight against food waste. It's good for us, it's good for the for the environment. Uh, and the other one is, is also very, very common in, uh, in social intervention is, is a social comparison feedback. So then Estée Stroker is a, is a famous, she was the youngest female a master chef in the Netherlands. So sort of she was the, she was the image of the whole sort of food waste challenge. And, and she, we measured in her restaurants and she has a potential of saving 300 kilos of food every year. So we used her also uh, on the nudges and, and sort of as a social comparison, because of course, after we had taken the baseline measurement, uh, they got a sort of, uh, all restaurants got a ben benchmark report. Okay, this is where you are and what your savings potential is. So they could actually compare themselves against this poster. Uh, okay, so can I save more or less and then a cis stroker who can save up to 300, euro, uh, 300 kilos a year. 
Uh, this comes back uh, the uh, the last two on on priming again. So so the ones the the two on the right hand side you've seen already. This is very uh, sort of again that traffic light system coming back. The the green uh, happy smile is really sort of positive words because uh, words can also prime us to to uh, to behave in more pro-social ways. And on the right hand side you see indeed uh, the sad red smiley and, and sort of really negative uh, costs and, and waste and more negative words around that. On the very left hand side uh, it's a very visual picture on particularly we had this for restaurants that normally don't do that much on, on sustainability so for them to be sort of all involved in, in sustainable actions that would also feel a bit double for the staff so this was for restaurants that also, okay, we're interested in joining, but we really want to do it to, to save costs. Fine, fair enough. And this makes it very, very explicit also uh, how much you're actually saving just by uh, indeed one kilo is equals to, to seven euro. So you have to do some quick calculation in your own uh, currency, uh, unless uh, euro, of course, is your, is your national currency. Uh, where did we put these up? Just as I showed before, uh, on uh, refrigerators, freezers, uh, trash cans, on doors, above the sink, but we also had some uh, nudges that we sent via mobile uh, communication to remind the staff. Overall results, uh, very happy to say, overall we reduced across the restaurants, uh, 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 reduced the food waste with 21%. Uh, that meant that we, may, we, we actually saved over 70, 75,000 kilos of food uh, with, a, with a saving of 700, uh, uh, <laughs> 757, 775 euros and over 150 kilos of uh, carbon uh, emissions. So, so really, really great results there. And, and I'm not sort of reporting this per se for more, we'll look at how good we are, but in more in, in sort of the last slide, which I again really align with, uh, with Carlos, it's, it's, it's really about teaming up, uh, small efforts are good. Uh, but teaming up, you can really, really do things on scale and we, we can do things on scale, we can really have an impact. And uh, I think for us, this meant that we actually had the Vice uh, Prime Minister of the Netherlands presenting the results at one of the biggest trade fairs in the Netherlands called Horekava, uh, together with uh, the CEO of the Rabobank, Wiebe Dreyer. Uh, and by doing that, we got a lot of uh, media attention, of course, as well. And now when we're gearing up for the second edition of the Food Waste Challenge, uh, we don't have to work so hard to get uh, restaurants involved uh, to sign up. Uh, and the participation was free, by the way. So, so restaurants didn't have to pay for it. So that's, I think, a, a really, really important learning is there is indeed finding partners and being able to do it uh, on a scale, because that's also where, where you can get into uh, to, uh, the following step, which we saw a lot of the, the restaurant that actually participated, contacted us now, and they really want to do more because they saw how easy it was to, to just take those first steps and what a difference that can make. And, uh, and yeah, every, uh, every bit helps. That's the end of my presentation. Thank you very much for listening. Well, thank you, Anna. Uh, it was an extensive presentation, I think, with some very interesting behavioral uh, techniques which you tried. Um, I, I for sure have a lot of questions about that, but uh, due to time reasons, I will directly go to, uh, to the questions of the audience. Um, so I've got two questions here to, uh, for you from the audience, and the first one is from Glenn Goodwin. How are these research findings being affected uh, by what is happening to, to you all now? Um, so how can it be affected actually, what, what, uh, these research uh, findings? Uh, please keep your answer a little bit short so that we can address as much uh, questions as possible. Well, what I, what I particularly hope is that what we've seen is that uh, we haven't seen any other measures on that scale uh, that have actually measured uh, food waste. And, and we had a lot of skeptical restaurants coming into it. So what I hope going forward, coming back when uh, restaurants are opening, what I really hope is just start measuring. Measure, measure, measure. In, in Dutch, there is a nice saying, say, meten is weten. So me to measure is to know. 
So that's that's my biggest hope. Okay, very good. Very good. Uh, we'll, we'll hear that. We hear that uh, um, story. Of, well, that's Carlos also his point of view. So I think that's a very important one, and we should measure more. So um, the next question would be, um, uh, I think, a very interesting one from Cyrus Kimani. Um, from experience research, where is the food waste most concentrated? Is that pre-service or is that post-service? Do you want to take that or do you want me to take that, Carlos? Yeah. So um, what we saw when we measured the, uh, in the restaurants, because we did make a, a division between kitchen waste and, and plate waste, uh, the majority uh, of waste is happening actually in the kitchen. Having said that, the most expensive waste is the waste that is happening on our plates. Why? Uh, not only because it has been produced, so it's expensive in terms of the labor that has gone into it, but it's also most expensive in terms of the resources that have been used in preparing it. Think of the French fries that go into the fryer. Uh, so. The seven euros that I've used here is sort of an average number, but if you look at the cost of plate waste, it goes up to even 10 euros. Okay. Carlos, do you want to add something? Please unmute your phone, uh, Carlos, if you <laughs> perfect. Thank you. No, that's exactly right. That is kind of the, is the, is the, the standard finding is that um, there is quite a lot of uh, plate waste which is uh, is a pity, but is uh, basically is a, a behavioral aspect. It, it's, it increases is is higher in certain culture in certain countries, where it is a, a custom to uh, order more food than what you want to eat, or to um, you need like a, to have full plate to feel uh, fully satisfied. But overall, in Europe, for example, it's the, the, it's the back office is in the kitchen where most of the food waste happens. It's not in the US, it's not necessarily in all the uh, East Asian countries, but it is indeed in Europe. Okay, all right. Well, I see some compliments also coming in here for your presentation, so and, uh, thank you very, very much. I see uh, one specific question, which I actually had in mind uh, by myself, so that's why I picked this one for you. Um, and that's from Anthony Lewis, and he asked, or she, she what, uh, regarding the studies and the challenge, can you speak to the lasting effect of the strategies? Are there similar results months later, and is the data being kept to track to, uh, and the results? Um, could, you, could you comment on that, uh, please, Anna? Yeah, I think it's a really, really good question. And I think it's a, it's a, it's a million dollar question in a lot of nudging studies. What is the longitudinal effect? What we have seen from consumer studies that indeed that the effects last. Uh, I am doing some follow-up studies in our restaurants in that regard as well. It's just difficult because like I said, our, our kitchen staff uh, changes a lot. Uh, what I have seen directly from the food waste challenge is restaurants contacting me and saying, okay, so we implemented these nudges. For example, some of them had the social norms. Can we now use the, uh, the commitment letter so that they want to continue, but they feel the need indeed to implement different nudges to, to sort of create more long lasting effects? Because of course, if a poster is hanging up there for, for four, what is the effect, long term effect? Hopefully it's gonna be enough to change behavior, but at a certain moment, we have to be honest, we also don't see the poster, so then you can better take it down. So, so that is so concrete answer is, we have seen at least initiatives in wanting to continue the journey, the path that they're on in, in reducing food waste because they've seen like with reasonably little effort, large effects can actually be created. Okay, clear. So um, I'm, I'm now drafting through the Q&A section. We obviously, I'm trying to, to get as much questions as possible, but I'll, I'll just pick the ones that, uh, that I think should be answered first. And this one is for uh, for Carlos actually. And, and the one is, uh, could you, sh and maybe also for Anna, uh, but maybe could you suggest some guidelines that exist regarding good practices on food waste management in the hospitality sector? Well, um, they, they are, they, and they, there are some uh, companies, particularly hotels, they are developing a, a best practices and, and guidelines 
uh, and they, they, I don't know if they are publicly available, but um, what I can say is that um, if we have to summarize practices, innovations in a very simple way, I will go by first measurement, as we all said, what you measure is what you can quantify and then what you can manage. So first measure and then secondly manage. By management, I mean a different aspects. Plan, create a budget what, where you can uh, understand the consequences of produce, the, the raw material that you buy. Buying certain produce will create a higher, lower amount of waste. So with the planning and the budget, anticipate what is going to happen with what you buy. Then innovate in the way you coordinate with uh, suppliers, with retailers, with vendors. Please I don't supply this type of food or in these conditions because it will increase food waste, because it's not worth it, because I don't think it is good for my business. Thinking of business, then go into your menu and, 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 and think carefully about what you are offering in your menu, what kind of food you, you, you offer and what you're offered in the sense of uh, the amount of food that you need to have in your kitchen in order to deliver and to be up to the standard, what kind of level of quality, do you want to um, get into more local produce? Are you, are, are you part of the value chains, for example, including a garden and having your own vegetables in the, in, in the back of the restaurants or the hotel, whatever, you can do it. You cannot do that in every place. But there are places in which you could and restaurants should be thinking about it. And then I think about communication. Communicate and engage with your clients. Clients, for the most part, don't care much about food waste in a, in a very specific sense. Like you don't think about pills, you don't think about bones, you, you just go to the restaurant to enjoy your meal. But how about asking and, and checking and benchmarking with customers? Is it okay to serve, to share, for example, um, half portions you have on the menu? You have the full portion and half. And some people might say, I'm not hungry for the full uh, plate, so I, I'm, I'm happy with half. The other alternatives, offering two, three, four dishes. Um, some people say, I'm, I'm happy with the main and the dessert. Other people prefer the whole thing. And there are ways to engaging with your customer indirectly into uh, reducing food waste. And, and, and that's also a way to, to me to, to uh, minimize food waste. And finally, and that very briefly, we didn't, and I didn't talk about it, but one a very large project in which I've been working is to looking at all the different uh, disciplines that are being studying food waste. And not only management, not only in, in, in gastronomy and cook, but also chemical engineering. And this is a very interesting point that we have to make. Why don't we try to bring a little bit more science into the kitchen? Because science as a chemical, as a food science uh, engineers, they've been doing a lot of research on, on properties, on the, on the life of the products, on things, on very simple things, like if you mix vinegar with whatever, the, the, f the food will, will be wasting in half an hour. And these are things that we can start engaging like a, a, the whole community of uh, experts into reducing um, uh, reducing food waste. I hope I, I give the, all the guidelines I can. Very, very good. Um, can I just uh, add some very, very operational things? Also maybe aligning to, uh, and, and that was also a little bit what I said, uh, think about all the varieties that you offer. Is it really needed? Side plate, is it really needed? Think about all the garnish that is on the plate. Is it really needed? And it, is it, is it really appreciated by the guests? So really looking at and really researching and measuring. So, so what is the trade-off then if I just reduce the garnish a little bit? Is that really going to impact the customer experience that much? And it might actually save me 
uh, save food waste, but also save uh, money at the end of the day. So, so those are things, uh, looking at a buffet, for example, what is the routing? Uh, making sure that you have all the cutlery and, and napkins and everything at the beginning, so the hands are quite full to avoid guests from really heaping up food. Uh, there is a website from RAP, W-R-A-P in the UK. They provide really, really good resources. So that's maybe for the person who asked that question also to check uh, their website out. Mm -hmm. Very good. Well, thanks. Um, just uh, another question, um, uh, which is more uh, focused on small restaurant owners. Uh, without government legislation, how do we convince small restaurant owners to switch to more sustainable waste management practices? Could you shortly comment on that uh, so that we maybe have room for another question? Yeah, if I can just say uh, for us, uh, when we ran the food waste challenge, uh, it was really demonstrating that they were throwing away their own money. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and really showing for every kilo that you throw away, you're actually throwing away your own money. And that was a big trigger for, for a lot of them, actually, to, to rethink and at least uh, embark on the journey of starting measuring. Because, of course, they said, yeah, but we don't waste anything. So, so that's the seven euros a kilo, that, which works, right? right. Yeah. Okay, uh, perfect. I will just add, uh, in, in here, for example, in Switzerland, we started uh, seeing a, a, some regions that are taxing uh, garbage. And we've been seeing a great reduction in food waste once the restaurants must pay for, a, for the garbage. And, and this is a, a very, very interesting approach. At the same time, uh, legislators and um, all the uh, institutions are educating, training uh, restaurants into ways to reduce, reduce food waste and therefore having to pay less for the waste, wastage. So uh, legislation is extremely important um, as, in as much as uh, the business perspective, the cost perspective, and also the consumer perspective. But I'm, in here, I'm thinking it's, it's a multi-stakeholder perspective. We, we have to have everyone involved in the conversation and helping restaurants is, is this one thing that I'm seeing in, all, in some other countries, in France and other places, we have started by blaming restaurants, by blaming the retailers. And that is not the right approach because we are all accountable. We are all responsible, household, um, uh, retailers, everyone is part of this challenge and we all have to collaborate for it. Okay, cool. Um, just moving on to the next question. Um, uh, this one I liked uh, because it's from a different uh, area of, 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 uh, of the world where we work, where I work at least at this stage. Uh, it's from Oliver Presley Leach. Um, Having done a food waste project in Saudi Arabia, we noticed that culturally restaurants and, and are under pressure to provide very large portions. So it's about the portion size. Uh, are there any nurtures examples, so maybe this is for you, Anna, uh, to change these cultural practices and pressures uh, uh, in this specific uh, culture or maybe in general? I think that this really comes back to, first of all, training the staff. Uh, so an example that I have is that people sort of indeed expect to, uh, if, if there are sides, for example, that to get their own side and that the staff really gets involved in saying, if you would like some more, we'd be more than happy to provide it to you. And often it turns out that people are actually not asking for that extra portion. Another nudge that we know from buffets, for example, is that we're asking people to come back more often to the buffet. Uh, what happens a lot is that people feel uh, the need to keep up a lot of food, but actually by putting small signs on the buffet and saying, welcome back to the buffet again and again and again, there is no need to heap up and you make it socially acceptable for me actually to, to revisit the buffet uh, more than once and coming back two or three times. Uh, so, so, and with that, we've seen in some studies actually food plate waste going down with 20, 21% even. So, uh, so another question which addresses this is, is, do you think that certain approaches work better compared to size, type, or a restaurant? Or, or what she means is that, I mean, does it effectively vary based on implementing entity, uh, like the nurturing versus uh, size or type of restaurant? Yes, I, I, I definitely do. And we looked quite carefully into this because I think 
for example, we had the social norm in saying uh, your, your chef is doing what, what he or she can to reduce food waste, join him. This is not possible. We see some restaurants, for example, uh, uh, operating very autonomously. Uh, putting in a social norm like that would not work, for example. Uh, so really looking at the size of the restaurant, I think it's is important. Looking at what the company culture is, is important. So we had one uh, commitment letter also, which actually was a team commitment letter, which everybody had to sign and write their name and it, it was put on the wall so everybody could see it. Uh, again, in a very autonomous operation where there is not such a, a great team feeling or spirit where you really have to work together, for example, to produce large uh, banquets, it might be better to have an individual sort of a commitment letter focused just on the individual performance. So, so yes, I think it's really important to look at uh, many aspects of the business uh, and on that basis, choosing a nudge that will, will be the most effective. Of course, we never know because there are many contextual factors. We know that from, from nudging studies also for consumers. Sometimes we see really large effects and sometimes there are no effects. So, so just because it hasn't worked the first time, that's why that sort of experimental approach uh, is very important to, uh, to adopt as well. Does that answer the question, Faiz? Well, to me, yes. Yeah. Um... Uh, just for Carlos, uh, uh, Anna was just mentioning, for example, the buffets, um, buffets like, uh, and there was one question about that to you. Um, do you think that it would happen that the buffets and uh, or the buffets, are, um, what will happen with it in the post-COVID area? Um, uh, will they still be around or will that change somehow? Wow, that is a... That's a, that's a good question. Actually, I am being an advocate of um, trying to get rid of buffet in as much as possible. So, uh, to me, uh, there is a, there is some fundamental uh, things that are wrong with buffet. I'm being working closely with hotels, and 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 sometimes uh, when when you see what happened uh, after like the breakfast buffet in a in a five-star hotel in the morning, and you see the amount of food that is wasted. Uh, you see uh, bottles of ch champagne that are just like halfway, and then you need to get rid of them. Oysters and lobster and all these type of very expensive uh, seafood and other things that just been in the buffet, and then you need to get rid of it. And and I think. Um, in, in here like, again is a is a, is a big question like uh, what kind of relationship we have with food and mm -hmm. and this is the consumer it is also the society and it's also kind of this level of craziness in which we are living in uh, you can be here at, like uh, 20 kilometers away from my house in the, in the middle of the Alps in Switzerland or in France or in Austria in a five-star hotel, you have the early morning buffet, and and you fly in lobsters from the Caribbean. And but are we are we really thinking twice about what we're doing with food? Right. Um, I, I would like to see, and I would like to think that at one point people will start questioning. Why do we have mangoes at 2,000 meters high altitude in a hotel in, in the snow season? And what is going to happen if you don't eat it? The, the whole carbon footprint of that piece of mango that goes into this uh, ski resort and it's totally wasted. So yeah, uh, yeah it's, um, I'm, I, I'm very, I have a very strong opinion about that. Hopefully, uh, if we increase the level of awareness and we see that uh, I, I've seen that trend, we might be changing the way we relate with food and particularly with the buffets. Sorry if I was a little bit uh, uh, less academic and more <laughs> talking about no, my... no, I like personal notes, especially <laughs> on these ones, because uh, I think that well, we're all persons as well. <laughs> and um, uh, we should uh, uh, do things both from the mind, but also from the heart. So yep. um, uh, it's very important, Carlos. Thank you for sharing this. Um, okay, we're running out a little bit of time. I'm trying to address uh, one or two more questions, and then uh, we're going uh, probably to, finish, to wrap up. 
Um, one of the earliest questions we received was um, uh, was again about the the best practices, and it was actually to you, Carlos. But Anna, you already provided some answers as well. Um, just to move on, if if I was a restaurant owner. Uh, or a hotel owner, I'm looking for best practices, obviously. And the first question about that was, uh, could you pinpoint some of those best practices and easy to implement in daily practice, either in a household or in a hotel? Just if I'm thinking now, I would like to start, what are the thir first things that I should be starting with? I really think that that uh, if you start a restaurant, start really again, sorry for being repetitive, but just start measuring. And, and we did that in a very simple, very pragmatic way. We provided, first of all, uh, use uh, transparent bags. That's a nudge in itself that you actually see what is being wasted. So all the organic food goes to into a, a transparent bag. Second of all, you put a notch on it. And what we did is that we provided the restaurants that measured themselves uh, and our teams that went in to measure with luggage scales. You know the scales where you can actually put your suitcase on? Yes. Well, of course, the, the food waste bags should not be too, uh, too large because they, you can't carry because they only uh, measure up to 40 kilos. So then you have to, of course, use more bags. But you can start that tomorrow. You can really start that tomorrow. You don't have to make very, very expensive investments in different bins or in, in computer systems, because that is what I, in my experience, talking to chefs where they're the most, and many hoteliers as well, so not only in the kitchen, is that sort of the overwhelming uh, technology, or I have to redesign uh, my whole menu, or I have to invest in a whole inventory system, but start there. Start understanding what actually ends up in, uh, in the bin. And, and if you start tomorrow, critically look at your menu. Am I really delivering that much more value by having uh, five types of bread and, and extensive garnish like we talked about? And if I have a buffet, can, does it have to be abundance of food with big uh, bowls of, uh, of, of all different kinds of things? Or maybe I can make it look beautiful by putting really beautiful decorations on the buffet and filling it up that way and actually providing smaller smaller bowls of food, if I, I agree with that, Carl, if you need to have a buffet. But I, I mean, not having a buffet is just such a large step for a lot of restaurants today, because they, it's like I talked about, they're just afraid of, of interfering with the customer interface. So experimenting with those triggers is really understanding and, and what is the value for the guests. And sometimes you might make the wrong decision, that's okay, and then change it back or try something else. But I think that that is also what, what Carlos also uh, looking at, at a more sort of uh, innovative, uh, yeah, design-based sort of research cycle where we, where we sort of really iterate and, and try new things and, and change and, and evaluate and see what works. Great. What would be your, uh, your um, uh, recommendations, Carlos, if I would start uh, tomorrow as a restaurant owner? Well, I said before, but if I have to add something else, I would say a very simple first step is there. Uh, I would say twofold first step. One is train your employees, talk to them, communicate and train, but then also engage in a conversation with your customers, which is not expensive. It's something that anyone can do and anyone should do. And at the same time, keep an eye on your food and think about what kind of um, food waste is avoidable and which one is unavoidable. And for the one, the, in focus in the one that is avoidable. It's just a very incremental step, but a very useful one. Why I am wasting something that is still useful? And as soon as you start asking this type of very simple questions, you come out with answers. Because what I said at the beginning, most many times the problem is just a problem of awareness that you don't have the time to stop and think why these things are happening. So just look at it and say, yeah, there are pills and there are bones. There is nothing I can do about it. Perfect. Let's move on. You just put in the right bean. And, but what about these other things? And that Anna's picture was amazing. Like when you see that, when you just put it on the floor and then people say, oh, wasn't me, 
it was uh, what happened and then these people start thinking twice about it right and then it's when the, the change happens great great well thanks uh thank you all uh, uh anna and carlos for your comments and uh, do you have one last thing that you want to share with with the audience about uh what our next step should be uh as a as a society within the in, in the current situation uh, of the coronavirus uh, what should be your next step? Um, uh, make it, we are now in a crisis, especially the hospitality industry. Um, how should we move forward as a, as the industry? Anna? I feel um, my heart, first of all, goes out to everybody working in this industry and, and that you're safe and, uh, and maybe all come back uh, to this great industry and, and build something that, uh, that is more sustainable and more long lasting than how we were operating before. Uh, I, would, uh, I would like to see that we use this time to reflect, uh, but also to educate ourselves. I think we have amazing resources and thank you, Gijs and Sveta for organizing this um, to, to, to tap into, to grow as individuals and to further ourselves uh, in terms of our knowledge and expertise. And may we start uh, in a way where we sort of really uh, look at how we can operate our businesses in, 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 in a smarter way where, where margins will be more lucrative, but not only margins for the bottom line, but also for other people and, and for the environment. Uh, I think that's what we all need um, as a society. Yes, um, I, I entirely agree with you. And also uh, I, th I think I, something that I said at the beginning, uh, for me, food is is not a commodity. It's not only a commodity. It it, it represents us. It, it it talks about our culture, our roots, who we are, as a, a this type of unique animal in the, on the planet Earth. And I think we've been distracted <laughs> for the last couple of decades, and and uh, we just thought that everything was up for grabs and uh, cheap and and you don't have to look behind what happens once you leave the restaurant when you cook where they said uh, the food supply chains everyone everybody was looking somewhere else and i think um uh if i have to just to say like a final word i would say that restaurants hoteliers are our partners they cannot be blamed they we have to work with them they 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 appreciate help they want to do things better they've been just delivering what delivering what they thought it was best and now we're learning that there are things that must be changed i'm quite sure none of them will be reluctant to change none of them will will be will resist change we only have to help them right so um so that's that that would be it let's work together yeah, well, great. Thanks. Uh, I, I can only support your call there, Carlos. So, um, Anna and Carlos, uh, well, thank you very much for uh, both your time and your expertise and your view on the subject for your recommendations. Uh, it has been a pleasure to listen and talk to you. Um, I also would like to thank you, audience, for your attentions and your questions. Um, I'm very sorry that we couldn't discuss all the questions. Uh, we ju discussed just half, or, uh, more than half of them, but uh, well, at least the subject is uh, is lively uh, uh, being discussed here. Um, if you joined in late or would like to check uh, some parts again, it, uh, the, the session will be online available as a replay, um, uh, or you could share it with your friends if you thought, well, this was a really good discussion. Um, so check out our website from Be Waste Wise, uh, where you find other webinars as well, uh, or a blog uh, which I, ha I have, uh, which is called Beyond Food Waste, uh, where we sh find best practices about food waste around the world, which I run together with uh, Kat Heinrich from uh, Australia. So uh, thank you very much for your attention, and uh, the final word is for uh, Sweda. Thank, thank you, guys, and uh, thanks a lot. Uh, thanks a lot to all three of you for the time that you've spent today because we overshot by nearly half an hour but you've just kept going on at it this time. I mean, we have questions coming in and it was absolutely great that you took the time to respond to all of it. 
I learned a lot in this panel, very honestly. And uh, thanks a lot to the audience as well, because you've not just been engaged with your questions, but there's a lot of audience members who also shared research from their organizations and from their universities, which uh, I have noted down. I'm, we have questions that we haven't yet answered, but please feel free to write to us at connect at wastewise.be and we will, we will be able to connect you with the panelists and we will also get the presentations from them. And uh, while for all those who've registered, this is available as a replay on Zoom itself. After two weeks, this particular webinar will also be available on our website and on YouTube. So thanks a lot to everyone. Thanks a lot for your time. I will end this webinar now. Stay safe. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.